Steve here, back for another episode of That Geek Guy. Today, we're going to take you inside the legendary Commodore 64. The Commodore 64 is the most successfully selling computer in the history of home computing. The Commodore 64 began its reign in 1982. From 1983 to 1986, the Commodore 64 dominated the market with a market share of between 30 and 40 percent. This ousted Apple and IBM and all other computers of the time. Today, we're going to look inside of this great machine to see what makes it so legendary. Are you ready? Okay, let's begin. When you first open the case, you'll notice this protective shroud. It serves two purposes, heat dispersion and RF shielding. I've already removed the screws, so let's see what's underneath. There were many revisions of the Commodore 64 motherboard during its 12-year run. By cross-referencing the assembly number here, in this case 250425, I can determine that this is a revision B board. On the top left here, you'll see these two big chips, CIA1 and CIA2. CIA stands for Complex Interface Adapter. These chips contain the internal timer, or clock, and control most of the I.O. processes. They were designed by MOS Technology, which Commodore purchased in 1976. You can identify when these chips were manufactured by the numbers stamped on them. For example, this CIA was made during the fifth week of production year 1986. These three chips in particular here are the, are the ROM chips. There's BASIC, Kernel, and Character. BASIC stands for Beginner's All-Purpose Symbolic Instruction Code. Commodore developed their BASIC under license from Microsoft in 1977. Kernel stands for Keyboard Entry, Read, Network, and Link. These chips contain the operating system in Commodore's 8-bit computers. The central processor of the Commodore 64 can be found right here. This machine has an 8500 processor installed in it. However, earlier Commodore 64s contain the more familiar 6510 processor. While the processor is usually considered the heart of modern computers, the SID chip here and the VIC-2 worked in concert with the 6510 to make the Commodore 64 the most successful production computer in history. The SID, or sound interface device, was developed by Bob Yanes. He was an engineer with MOS Technology. In addition to engineering, Yanes also had a background in music. So, while most sound processors of the time only produced beeps and clicks, the SID was the first to incorporate what's called an envelope function which enabled the chip to better imitate an instrument more accurately than other chips of the time. The VIC, also created by MOS, is an acronym for Video Interface Chip. The original VICs uh, were found in Commodore VIC-20s and contributed to their famous namesake. The VIC-2 here is uh, responsible for generating the video signals that are routed to the RF modulator. The RF modulator here then converts the signal to composite video for connecting out to your television set. Lastly, these little chips over here are the system RAM. Each one of these chips are 8 kilobytes of random access memory. There is a total of 8 of these chips, which gives you a combined system total of 64 kilobytes. This 64 is what gives the Commodore 64 its trademark name. Well, that does it for this week's episode. We thank you for joining us, and we hope you stay tuned for another edition of That Geek Guy. Thank you.